So for our, our ins first installment of We Were Warned for the month of October, I have something a little different. I am returning us to the topic of the Three Days of Darkness, mostly from largely unknown mystics. We've all heard of Marie Julie Jehenny. I've covered her numerous times on this channel, as have others. But there are other mystics who have had these warnings that they have promulgated to the faithful approved by the church. All of, most all of them were either blessed or saints, meaning that they have got the approval of the church to some degree or another, and often these come from sources that have, bear an imprimatur. So, that having been said, let's consider something here about the three days of darkness. There is not a time frame given, really. They just speak of times that sound rather suspiciously like ours, but that has often been a common analysis of people when they hear these things. However, it does it is prudent to be prepared for such things, first and foremost spiritually. And you will see why I say that when you hear one of these warnings. But these are from various lesser-known mystics. The most well-known of is Elizabeth Canori Mora. <clears throat> Elizabeth Canori Mora who I have covered before, but I wanted to zero in on her part here as a way to cap everything. That I've even said, there are there were something like 200 mystics throughout the history of the church who have spoken about what sounds an awful lot like our times. So this is a this would it is prudentially good to be prepared spiritually for what may come. Not that we know when it may come. Probably not helpful, but there you go. Anyway, let's begin with one of the lesser-known saints, at least in the United States and in most of the West, by the name of Saint Colm Kile. She is an Irish saint from, well, Ireland, from the 6th century, and she provides a long prophecy of the Three Days of Darkness. I'm not sure how this has been overlooked by most people who speak about these things, but it is worth noting here. Then a great event shall happen. I fail not to notice it. Rectitude shall be its spacious motive, and if ye be not truly holy, a more sorrowful event could not possibly happen. Hearken thou until I relate the things that shall come to pass in the latter ages of the world. Great carnage shall be made. Justice shall be outraged multitudinous evils, great suffering shall prevail, and many unjust laws will be administered. The time will come when they shall not perform charitable acts, and truth shall not remain in them. They will plunder the property of the church. They will continually sn be sneering at each other. They will employ themselves at reading and writing. They will scoff at the acts of humanity and at irreproachable human humility. There shall come times of dark affliction, scarcity, of sorrow, and of wailing. In the latter ages of the world's existence, and, and monarchs will be addicted to falsehood. Neither justice nor covenant will be observed by any one people of the, of the sons of Adam. They will become hard-hearted and penurious, and will be devoid of piety. The clergy will become fosterers, in consequence of the tidings of wretchedness that will reach them. Churches shall be held, they will become private, by the all-powerful men of the stonecutters. Judges will administer injustice under the sanction of powerful, outrageous kings. The common people will adopt false principles. And oh, how lamentable shall be their position. Doctors of science shall have cause to murmur. They will become impoverished in spirit. The age will mourn in deep sorrow on account of the woeful times that shall prevail. Cemeteries shall become all dug up, in consequence of the wrath that will follow sinners. Wars and contentions shall rage in the bosom of every family. Excellent men shall be steeped in poverty. The people will become inhospitable to their guests. The voice of the parasite will be more agreeable to them than the melody of the harp touched by the sage's finger. In consequence of the general prevalence of sinful practice, Humility shall produce no fruit. The professors of science shall not be rewarded. Amiability shall not characterize the people. Prosperity and hospitality shall not exist. But desolation and destitution will assume their place. 
the changes of seasons shall produce only half their verdure. The regular festivals of the church will not be observed. All classes of men shall be filled with with enmity towards one another. The people will not associate affectionately with each other during the great festivals of the seasons. They will live devoid of justice and rectitude, up from their youth of tender age to the aged. The clergy shall be led into error by misinterpretation of their reading. The relics of the saints will be considered powerless. All of mankind will become wicked. Young women will become unblushing, and aged people will be of irascible temper. The kind will be seldom be productive, as of old. Young people will decline in very vigor. They will despise those who will, shall have uh, long hair. There shall be no standard by which morals may be regulated, and nuptials will be solemnized without witnesses. Troublous shall be the latter ages of the world. The dispositions of the generality of men I will point out. From the time they shall abandon hospitable habits, with the view of winning honor for themselves, they will hold each other as objects for ridicule. The professors of abundance shall fall through the multiplicity of their falsehoods. Covetness shall take possession of every glutton, and when satiated, their arrogance will know no bounds. Between mother and daughter, anger and bitter sarcasm shall continually exist. Neighbors will become treacherous, cold, and false-hearted towards each other. The gentry will become grudgeful with respect to their trifling donations, and blood relations will become cool towards each other. Church living shall become lay property, such is the description of the people who shall come in the ages to come. More unjust and iniquitous shall be every succeeding uh, son of men. The trees shall not bear the usual quantity of fruit. Fishery shall become unproductive, and the earth shall not yield its usual abundance. Inclement weather shall come, and fishes shall forsake rivers. The people oppressed for want of food sh shall seek the end. Dreadful storms and hurricanes shall afflict them. Countless afflictions shall then prevail. Fortification shall be built narrow during those times of dreadful danger. Then a great event shall happen. I fail not to notice it. Rectitude shall be its spacious motive. And if ye be not truly holy, a more sorrowful event could not possibly happen. And now we'll move on to a lesser known visionary from much more modern times. Whereas St. Colum Kile was from the 6th century the followings are from much more recent periods in church history. St. Gaspar of Buffalo, an Italian visionary who negotiated peace during the years prior to the fall of the Papal States, described the three days of darkness as the end of those who would seek to harm the body of Christ, and that those who survive the three days of darkness will believe that they are alone on the earth, because everywhere the ground will be littered with what is left of those who seek to harm the body of Christ. Sister Palma Maria de Oria states that there shall be three days of darkness, during which the atmosphere will, will be the home of innumerable devils, who will cause the end of the large multitudes of impious and wicked men. Blessed candles alone shall be able to give light, and preserve the faithful Catholics from this impending dreadful scourge. Supernatural prodigies shall appear in the heavens. There is to be a short but furious conflict during which the foes of Christ and of all mankind shall be universally defeated. Then comes a general purification of the world, and the universal triumph of the church are to follow. And then from Venerable Elizabeth Canori Mora, who have done a greater in-depth view of our times, or what may be our times, in another video. But this is what she has to say on the, on the three days of darkness. The sky was covered with clouds so dense and dismal that it was impossible to look at them without dismay. The avenging arm of God will strike the wicked, and in his mighty power he will punish their pride and presumption. God will employ the powers of hell for the end of the impious and heretical who desire to replace the church and destroy its foundation. Innumerable legions of demons shall overrun the earth and shall execute the orders of divine justice. Nothing on earth shall be spared. After this frightful punishment, I saw the heavens opening and St. Peter coming down again upon earth. He was vested in his pontifical robes and surrounded by a great number of angels, who were chanting hymns in his honor, and they proclaimed him as sovereign of the earth. 
I saw also St. Paul descending upon the earth. By God's command he traversed the earth and chained the demons, whom he brought before St. Peter, who commanded them to return to hell whence they had come. Then a great light appeared upon the earth, which was the sign of the reconciliation of God with man. The angels conducted before the throne of the prince of the apostles the small flock that had remained faithful to Jesus Christ. These good and zealous Christians testified to him the most profound respect, praising God and thanking the apostles for having delivered them from the common destruction, and for having protected the church of Jesus Christ by not permitting her to be afflicted with the false maxims of the world. St. Peter then chose the new pope. The church was again organized. And by way of preview, I will close this video by saying that I will soon, I'm not sure how soon, do a video on the what remains of Marie Julie Jehenny's warnings. She offers some prayers and specific remedies for those times that lead up to and include the three days of darkness. This goes beyond the purple scapular. She has other things she said, and I will cover those in the not-too-distant future, preferably fairly soon. Um, and as an aside, there are some people reporting that they believe the three days of darkness will happen in October. Marie Julie Jehenny and others have said it will happen in the late spring, and one of the warnings of the three days of darkness will be a sudden and dramatic drop in temperature. The weather will turn very cold that day, abnormally cold, winter cold, in a day and a time of year when that should not happen. Such a dramatic drop in the, in the weather would not be that unusual in the fall in most places in the, uh, in the northern hemisphere. So just as a thought, Marie Julie Jehenny and others have said that the three days of darkness are an event that happens in the spring, not in the fall. So I wouldn't worry too much about it at this point. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments below. And please, as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.